click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Module 4-1, Introduction to Payroll. In this module, I want to show you the options available to you for QuickBooks Online Payroll. If you're considering QuickBooks Online Payroll, the options available to you are located at quickbooks.intuit.com forward slash payroll forward slash pricing. The first thing you want to do is identify if you would like to have 50% off for three months, which is right here, 50% for three months, or if you'd like to have a free trial for 30 days. It doesn't matter to me which one you pick. I do want you to be aware that the 50% off this big bold number, that is only for three months. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to select free trial for 30 days. I'm doing that because I want you to see the, the full cost of your payroll. The next thing you want to do is identify which version of QuickBooks Online Payroll makes the most sense for your business. You have the option of Core, Premium, and Elite. All three of the payroll options include what Intuit calls its full service payroll. Full service payroll means that it's going to automatically file your taxes and forms for you. This is a real blessing because it means that you don't need to remember to file stuff. The differences between core, premium, and elite are indicated in bold. So for example, next day direct deposit versus same day direct deposit. Workers comp administration, quick side note, that's for states where you can buy workers comp outside of the state. A quick side note, this is only applies in situations where you can buy workers comp from an insurance company. For clients in Washington state and a handful of other states, you don't have the ability to buy from an outside provider. You buy your workers comp through the state. Then there's HR support, expert review, track time on the go. You get the idea. The elite plan includes expert setup, 24 seven support, tracking your projects and time on the go, tax penalty protection, and a personal HR advisor. I'm not going to be the best person to help you determine which one of these plans is the best plan for you. If you're not sure which plan is the best plan for you, I encourage you to contact Intuit support and just discuss with them your business needs and how the plans vary and see if they can help you determine which is the best plan for you. Now that I've given you a sense of your options for QuickBooks Online Payroll, in the next module, I'm going to help you set up your QuickBooks Online Payroll. Module 4-2, Payroll Setup Checklist. In this module, I want to show you how to set up QuickBooks Online Payroll. All right, when we're in QuickBooks, we'll go to the left-hand side and we'll click on the word payroll. Right now, I don't have payroll set up for this file, so I need to click on get started. The first thing that QuickBooks is going to do is, is help me pick which payroll plan I'd like. So I'm just going to check the boxes for the, the services that I would like to have included in my payroll plan. Well, I certainly want the ability to pay my workers and file my taxes. That's the whole reason I'm doing this. I don't need any sort of tax penalty protection. I don't want auto run. I don't have my team on salary. I can choose to track time within QuickBooks or I can choose to track time externally. Let me go ahead and toggle this. What I notice is when I toggle this and turn on track time, it changes my plan recommendation from the core plan to the premium plan. Right now there's no dollars, but I know because the premium plan is to the right, it's likely to be more expensive than the core plan. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck track time because I've changed my mind about having that. I don't need or want HR support. I don't want same day direct deposit. I can scroll down and just verify the core plan offers next day direct deposit. I'm completely comfortable with next day direct deposit. Well, I like the idea of expert payroll setup. I think I'm going to go without it. And I like the idea of 24 seven product support, but I think that I'm probably going to go without that too. So really QuickBooks is recommending that I get the core plan. That's fantastic. Let me go ahead and scroll down. It says all the plans include these features. That's great. I like that. Let me go ahead and go back up and I'm going to say sign up and save 50%. What's unfortunate here is you have the option to either sign up and save 50% or you have the option if you went to the QuickBooks payroll pricing page to say you'd rather not save 50% but instead get 30 days for free. I'm going to go ahead and click on get started. This is going to give me a list of what I need to know. Have I paid anybody in 2021? I'm going to say no. I'm going to click next. When's my next payday? Let's go ahead and say it's at the end of April. And next, 
What's the primary work location? This is the work location. Who's my payroll contact? I'm my payroll contact. Add your first employee. I go ahead and click done. I will show you how to add employees in a later video. What I want to show you in this video is just what information do you need to get started? So this is what you need. You need to enter your business info, enter information about your employees, specifically who's working for you, what do they get paid? You need to enter your tax ID numbers. You need to connect to your bank so your payroll can be drafted out of your bank account and then the money sent to your team via direct deposit and the money sent to various tax agencies. The last thing you're going to need to do is sign your tax forms. The payroll setup checklist includes identifying your business information. We just saw that it's name and address, identifying your team, who's going to get paid, your business tax ID numbers, state and federal, connecting to your bank. You want to connect to your bank so that the money can be drafted out of your bank for your employee paychecks, as well as for your taxes. And the last thing you'll want to do is sign your tax forms. So there really isn't too much to worry about as far as a startup checklist. In this module, I showed you the beginning steps of how to set up your QuickBooks Online Payroll. In the next module, I'm going to show you how to add your employees to QuickBooks Online Payroll. Module 4-3, Adding Employees to Your QuickBooks Online Payroll. In this module, I'm going to show you how to add your employees or your team to QuickBooks Online Payroll so they can be paid. From within QuickBooks Online, we're going to go to the gray bar on the left-hand side of the screen. We're going to come down and we're going to click on Payroll. Once we're in Payroll, we can look at the to-do list. This is where we left off. So we said we'd like to start Payroll. We entered our business name and information. We entered our business location. We've entered our payroll contact person. And the next step is to come down here and, and tell QuickBooks about our team. So let's click on Let's Go. So let's enter our team. So John Doe. So we'll enter John's information as Rachel John Happy Land at Gentle Frog. We'll come down and indicate the hire date. Let's go ahead and say he gets hired on April 1st of 2021. We're going to say he works at the office address. We're going to enter his withholdings. The withholdings are not things that we invent as employers. These are things our employees tell us by filling out the W-4 form. So John's address, let's say 123 Main Street. Social security number, very creatively, it's going to be one through nine. He's married. Um, he claims zero dependents, zero other income, zero deductions. We're just going to keep all that as zero and we'll click done. Again, for emphasis, you're not going to make this up and you're not going to guess. You need to have your employee fill out a W-4 and you need to have that W-4 on file. Oh, it does not like my fake social. Let's just say it ends in nine, eight. And now the withholdings I've entered, how often do I pay John? Well, right now I haven't told QuickBooks what the pay schedule is for my business. That's what I need to set up here. So my business gets paid every week, every other week, twice a month, or every month. If I select every week, I can see on the right hand side, the upcoming payrolls. I can go ahead and select that and I can say, all right, for the pay period ending the 31st, my team will get paid on Friday. I can name my schedule as every Friday. I think that's a fine name. I'll go ahead and leave it like that. I'm going to go ahead and select save. How much do I pay John per hour? We're going to say that they are $25 an hour. I'm not going to set up any sort of default hours. I want the hours to be what John actually worked and I don't want QuickBooks to pre-fill in any sort of suggestion. If there are any deductions, I can add them here. Let me go ahead and click on this and I'll show you deduction options. So there's deduction, contribution, or garnishment. The first thing QuickBooks is asking me is whatever it is I'm about to enter, 
Is it a deduction slash contribution or is it a garnishment? I'm going to say it's a deduction. For deduction types, I have these options available. An FSA, an HSA, health insurance, other deductions, and retirement plans. I'm going to go ahead and say there's a deduction for health insurance. For the type, I'm going to say medical insurance. And then the provider. So I'm going to say Blue Cross Blue Shield. I'm going to say that every pay period, he deducts $50 for his health insurance. And I'm going to say that the company paid portion is $350. I'm not going to put any annual amounts in here. If you are offering health insurance to your employees and you're asking them to pay a portion of that health insurance, you can enter in how much you're asking them to pay from their paychecks, and you can choose to enter in how much you're paying as the company. I can tell QuickBooks whether it's pre-tax or post-tax. And then once I've selected that, I can click on OK in the lower right-hand corner. If I scroll down, I now see there's a deduction for John for Blue Cross Blue Shield. If I wanted to make any changes, I can change it with the pencil. If I wanted to delete, I can click the trash can to delete. Let me add a new deduction, and this time I want to show you what the options are for garnishment. I can choose garnishment types. These are my options. Let me go ahead and say child spousal support. I'll just say this is for support. And the amount requested, I'm going to use $50 to make it consistent. So now I can see the deductions for John is Blue Cross Blue Shield as well as support. Again, whenever I need to modify, I can click the pencil. Whenever I need to remove, I can click the trash can. I can scroll down, add a few more details. So what's John's birthday? 1-1-2000. And then his worker's comp info. I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus. And I can say I don't have the tax rate. Say so no problem. We can deal with it later. That's great. We will cover the tax rates when we get to company setup. Right now, I want to show you how to set up your employees. I'm going to choose done. I'm just going to review this and make sure I have everything in here I need for John, and I do. I'm going to select done in the lower right hand corner. I've now added my first employee. If I had more employees to add, I can click add next employee and fill in the same fields I previously filled in, or I can click done. Let me say continue. If I had entered John and I needed to leave and then come back later, I can always do that. I can come back and I can click on edit and I can add my next employee. If I want to add employees later is I can click on payroll on the left hand side of my screen and then come down to the word employees in the pop out menu. I can then choose to add an employee by clicking on add employee on the right hand side. And this will take me to the same setup wizard that I saw for my previous employee. When I set up John as an employee, I provided my email address as though I was John. This is the email that Intuit sent to John, letting John know that they're invited to view their pay stubs online. When you create an employee in QuickBooks Online and you add their email address, that employee is going to get an email that looks like this. It says you're invited to view your pay stubs online and then they can go and create an account and view their pay stubs. I'm not going to create an account, but I did want you to see what it looks like from the employee side when they're added to QuickBooks Online Payroll. In this module, I showed you how to add employees to QuickBooks Online Payroll. In the next module, I'm going to show you how to fine tune a couple of other things in the company setup for QuickBooks Online Payroll. 4-4, Company Setup. In this module, I'm going to talk to you about how to set up your company for QuickBooks Online Payroll. So far, we've accomplished the handful of things on our to-do list. We've customized the payroll. We've added the business contact info. We've added our team members. Now we need to fill in our company tax information, specifically our state and federal tax ID numbers. I'm going to go ahead and start by clicking on Let's Go. So the first thing QuickBooks wants to know is our legal company name. In this example, it's Demo Payroll Setup, our business address, 
what type of company we have. So do we have a sole proprietor, a nonprofit, or something else? We have a sole proprietor. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. It's asking for our federal tax info. Our federal tax ID number is going to be very similar to our pretend social security number. Which payroll taxes do we form with the IRS? We're going to file a 941. How often do we pay our taxes? In my example, I'm going to choose semi-weekly. If you're not sure when you need to deposit your payroll taxes, I strongly encourage you to look this up on the IRS website. Publication 15 should give you the information you need. I'm just going to kind of scoot down and show you where to look just so you have it. So depositing taxes, when to deposit. By doing that, it takes me about halfway down this form and there's this fairly lengthy description of how you know when you need to deposit. I'm going to let you read that on your own. I want you to understand it. Mostly my purpose in taking you here is just showing you Here's a resource you can look at to make sure you're depositing your taxes on the correct schedule. If I go a little bit further down, you can see the penalties for not depositing on time. This is pretty important. These are the penalties for being late with your federal tax deposits. So I encourage you to take a look at this and make sure you're depositing on time. I'm going to go back to QuickBooks now. So we're going to say that we're a semi-weekly depositor and I'm going to click Next. In a moment, QuickBooks is going to say, let's add your info for Washington State. It knows that I'm in Washington because previously it asked me for my office address, which is Bellevue, Washington. It's asking for my ESD employment number and it put optional in parentheses. Thankfully, I'm going to leave it as optional because I don't have an unemployment number to add to this video. It says, do I know my unemployment insurance rate? I'm just going to say use 6% for now. In the state of Washington, the unemployment insurance is provided by the Department of Labor and Industries. Our unemployment insurance rate varies depending on our business type and then also the claims for our business that will go up or down. Next is the Ad Employment Administrative Fund Rate. I'm going to go ahead and click the drop down and select my fund rate. If you don't know what your fund rate is or your unemployment insurance rate, I would encourage you to contact the state agency that handles this. I'm sure there's somebody there that would be happy to help you and provide you this information. The next question is, how would you like to handle paid family and medical leave? I'm just going to pick an option. And then the workers comp, I need to enter my UBI number as well as my account number. In both cases, in this example, it shows optional. So I'm going to choose not to enter account numbers. For your businesses, I strongly encourage you to find and enter the actual information and not to skip it like I'm doing. Once you're happy, go ahead and click Done. The last step we need to do is connect our bank. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Let's Go. It's asking me to connect my bank to QuickBooks. The reason I want to connect my bank to QuickBooks and allow QuickBooks the ability to draft funds out of my account is so that I can pay my team and pay my taxes. Let's go ahead and click on Get Started. It's going to ask me for some information. So business contact info, let's go ahead and click Review. All right, so it's asking to review my business address, my industry, my principal officer. Oh, it wants my phone number. All right, so my principal officer, it's going to be myself. I'm going to say same as business address. I'm going to say my date of birth is 2000, my phone number, last four of my social, and then bank account. Go ahead and add a new bank account. It's going to ask me to either search for my bank account or click one of the ones that are available here. I'm going to pretend that I use Commerce Bank. It's going to ask me for my company ID and my password. I'm not actually going to log into any sort of bank. I think you get the idea from here of how to log in. That wraps up company setup. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to run payroll. Module 4-5, Run Payroll. 
In this module, I'm going to show you how to process payroll within QuickBooks Online. To get started, I'm going to click on Payroll in the gray bar on the left-hand side. When I click on Payroll, it gives me the option to continue with my setup, which in this case is connecting the bank account that I don't plan on doing for this video. Otherwise, I can choose to pay with paper checks. I'm going to take the route of pay with paper checks. This is going to be very much the same as how you would do it if you were setting up direct deposit. When I choose to pay with paper checks, I indicate the pay period. So I'm going to pretend like it's the next pay period. When I change the pay period, it changes the pay date on the right hand side. I indicate the payment method is paper check. I can indicate the number of hours that this person worked. I can put a memo in if I'd like. And then I'll click on review payroll in the green button in the lower right hand corner. QuickBooks gives me a nice summary to let me know what the total payroll cost is. My employee got a gross pay of $1,000. There are deductions from the employee paycheck of $200. My employee paycheck will be just over $770. When I look at the total payroll cost, I see my total payroll cost is $1,492. My employee is getting a check for $778. My employee had deductions from their check of $221. My employee's gross pay is $1,000. My employer taxes are $492. That's where it comes up with the payroll cost of $1,492. The money for the employee plus the employer taxes. When I'm happy, I can click Submit Payroll in the lower right hand corner. And voila, it's done. I can enter a check number if I've written a paper check. If I'd like, I can print out pay stubs. Let me go ahead and show you what these look like. So this is the pay stub I would provide to my employee. It details out their pay, any deductions, any taxes, etc. I'm going to select finish payroll in the lower right hand corner. Now that I've run my first payroll, I can show you payroll reports. Let me go ahead and show you a report that I think is interesting. To get there, I'm going to click on the word reports on the left hand side. In the upper right hand corner where it says find by report name, I'm going to take the shortcut of typing in the word payroll and seeing what my options are. What I'd like to look at is the payroll summary report. When I click on the payroll summary report, it's going to show me a summary of my payrolls. In this case, it's the one payroll I've run. As you run more and more payroll, you might find this report is useful to you, so I wanted you to know where it was at and what it looks like. As you saw when we looked at the report list, there's a whole variety of payroll reports you can review. In this video, we covered how to run your payroll and how to generate a payroll report. In the next video, I want to show you how to adjust your payroll settings. So for example, if you picked an incorrect tax rate for the employer taxes, or if your employee provides you with a different W-4 form. I want you to see how to adjust those settings. Module 4-6, Adjusting the Payroll Settings. In this module, I want to show you how to locate and adjust your payroll settings. This could be something simple like you've entered your tax rates wrong, could be that your employee has provided you a new W-4 form, or it could be something as simple as it's a new year and the tax rates have been updated. Let me show you how to adjust these things in QuickBooks Online. Let's start with the example of adjusting your business tax settings. I'm going to click on the gear in the upper right hand corner. On the left hand side, under the header of your company, I'm going to click on Payroll Settings. This gives me the opportunity to edit any payroll settings I might need to change, such as my federal tax. Perhaps I've entered the incorrect EIN number and I did correct it, I can do that here. Perhaps my Washington tax rates are incorrect. I can click the pencil and change it here. This is where I would add a new tax ID number. This is where I would change my tax rates and change my tax rates and change my tax rates and enter my UBI number. If you need to change something with regard to the business setup for your payroll settings, this is where you're going to go to do it. Let me show you where to go to change the settings for your employee taxes. On the left hand side, you're going to go to payroll. 
You'll then hover and click on the word employees. We're going to pretend our employee John Doe needed to have something changed. To change it, I'm going to click on John's name. I'm then going to click on the pencil under pay. This will give me a chance to update any information I might need to update, such as the W-4 form. And if anything here was incorrect or needed to be changed, I could just change it and select Done in the lower right-hand corner. Changing John's information will change it from this point forward. It will not update or change any of his historical paychecks. In this module, we covered how to adjust the payroll settings both for your business and for your employee. In the next module, I'm going to talk to you about payroll taxes, specifically where to find the payroll tax forms. Module 4-6, Payroll Taxes. I'm going to talk to you about your payroll tax forms within QuickBooks Online. Once you've opened up your QuickBooks file, to locate your payroll taxes, you're going to click on Taxes on the left-hand side of your screen, and then this time choose Payroll Tax. At the top of the screen, you see the taxes that are accruing. This lets you know the taxes that you'll need to pay to various agencies. Just as a reminder, you're not responsible to pay them. QuickBooks will take the money out of your account that's part of the full service payroll. This is just letting you know, hey, set this money aside, it's going to be drafted out of your account later. I recognize for our example, the payment method says manual. It says manual because we did not set up QuickBooks Online to draft any funds out of our bank account. If we scroll down, we can see there's different payment resources. So we can see our tax payment history. There isn't any because our QuickBooks and tax payments are brand new. Tax setup, tax liability report. I do want to show you the tax liability report. It's this report just in a different view. So here's the tax amount and the tax paid and the tax owed. This helps you keep track of what you might owe to various agencies. This is also helpful because if you're not sure what's on the tax form 941, you can look at this list and see what it's comprised of. The same with the 940, the Washington Paid Family Medical Leave, assuming you're in Washington, Washington State Unemployment. This list will be updated to be specific to your business and your state. We're all going to have 941 and 940, but the things that are state specific, in my example, Washington, will be updated for you and your state. Down below, I have prior tax history and compliance resources. This is all really good information, but until we have an actual tax filing, I do want to show you this, and we can just imagine together we saw stuff here. If I click on the word filings in the upper left hand side, it's going to show me a list including archive forms and filings. So this is going to be all the tax forms that QuickBooks has filed for me over however many years QuickBooks has been filing my payroll taxes. This is a really nice resource for anybody who wants to go back and look at historical forms. This wraps up payroll taxes and also wraps up the module for payroll. In the module for payroll, we talked about the options for QuickBooks Online Payroll, how to set up your QuickBooks Online Payroll in general, how to add your employees, how to customize it to include your company information, how to run your first payroll, how to go back and adjust any settings that need to be adjusted, and lastly, how to review the taxes that you'll have outstanding and how to find filed forms for your payroll taxes. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free QuickBooks Online Essential Keyboard Shortcuts infographic, click over there. And click over there to watch more QuickBooks videos from Simon Says It.